Now what happened was the Sahaba, when they realized the Prophet ﷺ was injured, they rushed towards the Prophet ﷺ as a defense line. It was uh, Hazrat Talha radiallahu ta'ala, and he stood in front of the Prophet ﷺ, and he became a living shield. A human being like me, he was. He had feelings, he had nerves on his body, he felt it. If you scratch, it says me when we first scratch with a nail, we feel it. He also had, you know, senses on his skin. He felt, he was a human being. He stood in front of the Prophet ﷺ, and he became a shield. He's in the battlefield and people are actually shooting arrows at the Prophet ﷺ, and he's standing there and he's taking all the arrows right inside his chest, right into his body. And it comes in the narrations that Abu Talha on that day had 35 to 39 wounds in his body. 35 to 39 wounds in one person's body. He was standing there defending the Prophet ﷺ. So now again in this battle there was so much happening. The Sahaba they were there. There was another Sahaba by the name of another Sahabi by the name of. Um, Qatada bin Nu'man radiallahu ta'ala. He realized that, the, that, the, that someone's showering the arrows, someone's defending the body of the Prophet sallallahu So what he did was he put his face in front of the face of the Prophet sallallahu He lined himself in such a manner that it was as if his face was blocking the face of the Prophet sallallahu So wherever the face and head of the Prophet sallallahu went, he put his head that way. And if it went to the right, he put it to the right. If it went to the left, he put it to the left. If it was straight, he put his head straight. Until what happened was one person, he shot him with the arrow right in his eye. And when he shot him in the eye, he pulled out the arrow, and along with the arrow came out his eye. And his eye came inside his head. So now he has one eye there and he's injured. And here, the Prophet's life is still at threat. The situation is still very critical. So then he comes to the Prophet ﷺ and he says to the, he says to the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, that, Ya Rasulullah, <laughs> what is this? My eye's in my hand. Help me. So the Prophet ﷺ, first when he saw this, the Prophet started crying. Now this person, he was defending me. And in return, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tested him by taking his eye out. He was hit right in his eye. But imagine, look at this sahaba, subhanAllah. Such pain that if me and you were hit like this, he'd probably be on the ground crying, like little girls. We'd probably be crying on the ground, Ooh, I've heard my eyes out. Put a bandage on there, put some alcohol on there. Do this, do that. That's how we'd be. And this sahabi is holding his eye and he's still standing there. And he's saying to the Prophet sallallahu that look at this Rasulullah, what would I do now? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Qatada bin Nu'man radiallahu ta'ala, when he while crying, the Prophet was crying himself. And he said, Oh, oh Qatada, you have two choices. Either paradise or your eye. Which one do you want? Do you want Jannah or do you want your eye? So sometimes when the Sahaba would come to the Prophet, the Prophet used to always remind them that for any difficulty you have, if you're patient, what will you get in return? Jannah. If you're patient with the difficulty Allah gives you, every person has a different difficulty. Every person has their own difficulty. Especially when it comes to some. As some handicapped feature or some, 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 some that a person handicapped in, or some difficult, some physical difficulty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guarantees that person paradise. So for example, there was one sahabi, she came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and she said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, oh, oh Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I get, these, I, I get, the, I get um, the, these attacks, I get these seizures. So she said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, oh Rasulullah, pray for me that I don't get these seizures anymore. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that if you're patient, Allah will give you paradise. What did he say? I can pray for you, but if you're patient, what are you going to return? You'll get Jannah. So then she says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I don't mind being patient, but the issue is whenever I have the seizure, what happens? My satr opens up. When I have the seizure, my cloth, it lifts up and my satr opens, and everyone is seeing my satr. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa raised his hand and made dua, Oh Allah, next time, from now on, whenever she has the seizures, never let her satr open up, and for you is paradise. So this is the way the Prophet the tarbiyat he gave it. That you be patient with your with your test, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you paradise. So the same thing in the battlefield at such a critical moment, the tarbiyah never changed. At such a critical time, what happened? The teachings and the nurturing of the Prophet, they didn't change. The very same answer that they would have got while sitting at home in a comfortable house in Medina Munawwara was the very same thing the Prophet said to the Sahabi in the battlefield. Another thing we see, the Prophet is injured from more than four places in his body, and he's profusely bleeding. But yet the Prophet ﷺ did not complain and he still reminded the Sahaba of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did he do? He still reminded them of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That be patient qatada and you get paradise. So he says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Oh Rasulullah, I don't mind being patient, I don't mind getting paradise, but the thing is I'm married. And if I go back to my house with one eye, my wife may not like me anymore. So even he's in the battlefield, this is the way he responds. He says, that if I go back with one eye, my wife, my wife may not like me anymore. So then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa applied his saliva and then he put it back inside, he placed the eye back in it, it, and he placed the eye back into the into the socket and the Prophet made the dua, Allahumma a'atihi jamal. Oh Allah grant the Sahabi beauty. 
So all the Sahaba Radwanullahi Ta'ala Najmain, they were all over the battlefield and subhanAllah, they were making their sacrifice for the sake of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They realized that it was their honor to die for the sake of deen and defending Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And 14 of them, they began to fight. And what they realized that one of the, Rasul, um, one of the Sahabi that was there, his name was Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas Allah. And he was an amazing archer. He was like a, a sniper, he was a sniper with a, with, a, with a machine gun, you can say. He used to fire his arrows so fast, so swiftly and so accurately, that wherever, his, wherever he would release the arrow, it would hit the target. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when he saw the skill of Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas Allah, he started gathering the arrows from the other companions. And he started giving it to Sa'ad, Sa'ad, here, take this one too. Take this one too. Take this one too. Sa'ad, chew this faster, faster. And he's giving to Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas And Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas says, Oh Messenger of Allah, if you want to see my skill, let me show you today. And he's on his game and he's taking those arrows and he's firing them away. And, and who's taking the shots here? Sa'ad is taking the shots. Who's giving the assist here? Who's giving the assist here? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Look at that. Right? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is giving the assist, when he's giving the pass, what is he saying? He's saying, Irmiya Sa'ad, Fidaka Abi wa Ummi. Sa'ad, just keep shooting. May my mother and father be sacrificed for you. Irmiya Sa'ad, Irmiya Sa'ad. Sa'ad, keep shooting, keep shooting. And Sa'ad bin Abi Waqasid Allah is firing away, firing away. And he's not allowing 3,000 people to even come into close proximity with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Kuffar, when they see this, they pull out their bow and arrow too. And they begin to fire from long distance. And the Sahaba, they realized that now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be injured. One Sahabi, he turns and he stands in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He puts himself between the Kuffar and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he looks at the face of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He turns in front, he turns facing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his back to the enemy. He expands his body and he stands there and he locks his eyes into the eyes of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what is he doing there? You know what he's doing there? He becomes a human shield. And the kuffar, the enemy, are firing arrows in his back that if we keep firing, he's going to drop. And they keep firing, and they keep firing, and they keep firing, and he isn't moving anywhere. He is not feeling any pain. Why isn't he feeling the pain? Because where is he looking? He's looking at that beautiful face that I'm talking about. He's looking at the face of Muhammad Arabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he's looking at the face of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All he's doing is his eyes are locked in the eyes of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Sahaba say when he fell on his face on the ground, he had 60 wounds in his back. 60 arrows. How many arrows? Can you imagine being shot 60 times in the back with a gun? Can you imagine that impact? Because that's what an arrow was. An arrow was a gun. It was a bullet. If you shot the person with the arrow, he was going to die. So they, 60 arrows in his back. And he's standing there and he's looking at Rasulullah and he's holding off from Rasulullah. 